Hello YouTube, this is Lobo and I'm doing an introductory video for my new YouTube channel called the Stray Dog Mining Crew. Uh, it's going to be a channel that's going to be devoted primarily to prospecting, all things prospecting, and uh, bushcraft, camping, uh, those type of things. Uh, be doing videos, I want to do how-to videos on different aspects of prospecting from uh, how do you locate uh, an area that is gold producing or if you're going there for quartz or uh, sunstones, whatever the case may be, uh, how you would locate these areas, you know, um, where to dig, uh, how to dig, those types of things. Uh, since um, basically we're going to be living out of an RV on public lands and doing this on a full-time basis, uh, there will most definitely be a lot of camping type videos and then things posted there as well. Uh, instructions on uh, mineral rights, mineral laws, those type of things. Uh, but one of the things that I do uh, before this uh, heading out into the, the the backwoods looking for gold or looking for gemstones, whatever the case may be, is, is uh, putting some research into an area. Uh, now what you're looking at here, this is Google Earth and that's my primary research tool. Um, and what I want to do is I want to prospect an area. And this is an area in southern Colorado here in, uh, close to Canyon City. And uh, what I do first and foremost is I want to make sure it's an area that's easily accessible because uh, if you're a hardcore you can find gold on mountaintops but not everybody can get to the top of a mountain or would want to get to the top of a mountain. Uh, so one of the first things that I'm looking for is trying to find a road uh, and river systems and then also public lands and then putting those together and seeing uh, where the rivers cross public lands which you can uh, prospect for gold there all you want. Um, and identifying those places and then actually driving to those locations and prospecting to see if there's anything valuable there and then going from there. Uh, what I do first, and I'll see if I can make this rather, make it quick, is we have Google Earth and this is a section of uh, southern Colorado here. Uh, first I'm going to click, I identified where the road was at and I traced that out. So we got a road here and so it's accessible and that road is accessible uh, year round. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is where the public lands are versus where private property is at. And so I've got a land manager that I have downloaded off a federal website. And what the colors you're looking at here is yellow is, uh, is maintained or managed by the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. Uh, these areas are open to prospecting. Uh, the green section up here, this is uh, state park lands, or excuse me, federal park lands, uh, U.S. Park Services. Uh, these lands are also open to mineral exploration. And over here we have the blue. Now the blue is actually uh, in this case. In this case here, this is the state of Colorado. So these are public lands that you can go to and visit, uh, but you can't do mineral exploration here because even though it is a public land, it's a state land, and the state purchased this land from the feds, and so therefore it's essentially private property of the state that you live in. And then of course the areas that have nothing, no color whatsoever, those are individuals private property and you cannot, most certainly cannot go mineral, exploring for minerals there. So with this drawn out, the next thing I want to look at is the river system. So I have a topographical map that I refer to as an overlay and then I trace out whatever river systems I find on that. And I traced them out for this area and we have a, a want to kind of keep a secret of the area I'm prospecting because I'm doing this for a friend. I'm, he wants me to locate an area where he can go prospecting. And so we have a large river here, then we have these small creeks that feed into it. Well, as you can see, these creeks cross public lands here. And they go across the public lands, which means there is running water. Uh, clean running water is you know, extremely valuable if you're prospecting for minerals, particularly gold. And also, if you're going to be camping there, having access to clean water is <laughs> it really makes or break the camping experience. So from looking at this here, I can see the, the creeks cross across this land here. So I'm going to turn off the land manager because I need to know specific details about the land now. So we turn that off, and then what I've done is I've gone to the uh, General Land Office website, it's a federal website, and they maintain the survey plats for a region. Uh, and a survey plat essentially is a uh, schematic that shows you uh, who owns what, what the easements are, whatever whatever the case may be. So I'm going to see if I can zoom in here a little bit. And then in here, basically this shows me if an area is open for mineral exploration or not. Because some of these areas are, like this one here says DC all minerals. That means all minerals are allowed here. Basically you can search for minerals here as well as here. You have to avoid, uh, these are easements or right -aways. You can't do uh, any kind of mineral exploration along that line there. And this here is actually an old mine uh, from 1902. 
that is actually private property so you can't do any prospecting there but you want to find these areas where the mine is at because these mines they were mining for precious minerals and this mine here is right next to a water source and so from looking at that I'm going to turn off, well I'll keep this plat turned on, the next thing I'm going to show you is is I went through and I drew off 20 acre uh, plots if you will, mineral claims uh, to show areas that I can go out and look for minerals uh, as a US citizen that is and this is what I came up with and so we have uh, each one of these is 20 acres and these are areas along these water systems here I'm assuming that there's water in here and then you can see these areas that run right next to this mine here these all of these here are open for mineral exploration if I go out here to that spot right there and I'm digging the ground and I find me a gold nugget for hundred eighty nine dollars I can contact the BLM and I can get a gold claim and I have a right to stay there as long as I want in my RV and dig for gold and and, and, and uh, there are rules and regulations that go with that uh, but as a small miner um, you know it's, it's a mineral claim and I can go there and find all my pretties now I come across a lot of these areas that I can't you know I don't need to have 200 claims and so I do locations for people that are interested in rock hounding uh, gold got gold fever and they want a mineral claim I will locate them for folks and so I'm kinda of showing you how I do that and so these areas are open for exploration here all the ones that are in gold now I'm gonna take off the survey plat behind it and other resources that I use on this area is let me see if I can find it also through the general land office they offer historical surveys now this survey I believe is from 1880 1881 as uh, when this originally this whole area when it was originally drawn out and this shows you where the water systems uh, and ranges are uh, when they first did it and in Colorado where there's a lot of been a lot of mining and mineral exploration sometimes the river has been diverted or changed so this is a good resource to come to to see like for example you can see that in 1880 the river came down this way went to that spot there and then continued on out now the river comes down and it's changed course and so we can explore along this area here but we may not be able to explore here there's no water here but there's been millions and mi millions and years of there was a creek there and so any mineral deposits that happened you know before this creek was diverted you know within the last 140 years uh, before that happened so that lets me know that that may be a place to dig as well to see if I can find uh, gold or quartz or whatever I'm looking for um, so that's a historical map as well it kinda helps me you know see if an area that I wanna you know invest the gas and time and go to and stay at and, and prospecting at and uh, the last one I want to show you here is I'm gonna turn that off and then I showed you that right in here there was a mine uh, from 1902 well also again from the land office website I can actually go out there and I can download uh, the original survey plat for that mine when the the uh, gold claim was first filed by this mining company and what I did is I cropped out that image and then dropped it in to show exactly where that mine was at and so that way I can uh, I can tell anybody that's looking for for example the the gentleman that's asking me to go out and look for this uh, look for an area here um, he's very happy to see that there's a mine right there next to these areas that are claimable and so the next step for me would be is basically uh, hopping in the RV and driving out to this location here and then spending a day possibly two days and going up to this creek and searching for minerals uh, to see if there are minerals there and uh, that's pretty much the pre-prospecting aspect of prospecting because you know it's it's you know grab your gold pan and head out into the to the backwoods to go find you know gold or quartz or whatever well it's really saves you a lot of time and a lot of money and gas and and uh, to to research this beforehand to actually see where there is places that are available and also you want to find mines that are older mines because you know there was minerals there now what's interesting about this is in 1901 or two whenever this mine came about an ounce of gold went for five dollars and so an ounce of gold these days is what fifteen hundred sixteen hundred dollars so back then they didn't worry about a lot of the small gold the small pieces the grand pieces or whatever they were there for the big old nuggets to get the most amount of money out of it when they left behind what's called slop a lot of smaller pieces of gold they didn't even bother with well now that gold is so expensive it's worthwhile to bother with it so uh, that's what uh, modern prospectors are doing is going out there and cleaning up what's basically called the slop which is going through and, and to these areas that had gold mines in the past because they didn't get all of it 
which is really kind of the cool aspect of it. But anyway, uh, for the for the sake of trying to keep this short, anyway, that's pretty much how I locate an area to prospect. Uh, hopefully this week I'll be able to get the Jeep registered and I'll be street legal again. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of days I'll be able to start uh, uploading prospecting videos uh, of creeks that I'm on and, and kind of showing some of the things that I do. Uh, and, and also it would be good to see how Joy, uh, with my new partner here, see how she does hers because she's really big into rock hounding. Knows more about rocks than I do. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, pretty much this is the Stray Dog, uh, Stray Dog Mining Crew channel uh, introductory video. And uh, so peace, love, God bless, and I will talk to you all later.